sure about that? That one's a tiny one. Oh, they're just, uh, I think they're just hungry. Don't turn your back to me, man. <laughs> Our arrival to the Sacred Valley was actually through Cusco. We were landing in Cusco, I just felt like this wave of emotion. I was so happy to finally arrive. Cusco. You gotta talk louder. Land of the coca leaves. We tried coca leaves for the first time. I was really kind of afraid of altitude sickness. Coca leaves, you have to drink and eat a lot of, chew a lot of them for it to really be effective. So we kind of like, oh, we're drinking coca tea. Like, this will help. But who knows if it really actually did help. <laughs> I don't know. It tastes sort of like sticks. It's I like was you're chewing on a twig. <laughs> right. I was going to say it tastes like alfalfa smells. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. Arriving at the airport, we literally just got out of the airport and got in an SUV and drove away. That's also when we met Isaias for the first time. Kind of set the tone for the way Isaias was with us the rest of the time. Just a very calm, quiet gentleman. <laughs> coca tea is made from the same um, agricultural ingredient that cocaine is. But it's not cocaine tea, it's coca tea. Isaias drove us out through the Sacred Valley and to Oyante Tambo, which is where we spent most of our time in the Sacred Valley. Oh. On the first day, Rodrigo and I decided to go out and wander around by ourselves. The kids and Heather weren't feeling 100%, so we first dropped off some laundry and then um, head out into the town. In all of my thinking about Cusco um, in earlier years and earlier travels, I had always imagined it to be like a real backpacker's mecca. And I had imagined it to feel like Bangkok did, where um, you know lots of people coming from different places all over the continent. So it did have that feeling of a crossroads. Cusco is a relatively big, large town hub. It has about half a million people just under that. Uh, and like every other small town in Peru, there's a Plaza de Armas. This Plaza de Armas is actually quite beautiful, probably one of the largest ones in, in the Sacred Valley. Um, and there's a cool thing about it, it has two Catholic churches, and uh, they apparently had some sort of riffraff rivalry in the 1500s, where the big one wanted to be dominant, and then the little one was uh, built, and uh, the big one complained to the Pope, there was a big, big, big fight over you need to be taken down, or you know, we're more important than you. It's typical, you know, polit politics of Catholicism. <laughs> to this day, when they are trying to do any improvements in the streets, they always find new ruins underneath. So sure enough, we were near the Plaza de Armas, walking around one day, and uh, there were ruins underneath. They had just like isolated the area, but you could totally see there were income for sure. Later in our stay, Isaias met us again and took us for a walk around Cusco where he told us more about what we would see and um, the history of the city. And to me, one of the most fascinating things was um, going inside uh, one of the cathedrals there. For example, there was a giant painting that is known as the Peruvian Last Supper. So this painting had been created by a native Peruvian artist, but that person had been influenced by the European perspective. You see elements in the painting that are Incan, so corn and cuy, which is a guinea pig. When we got to explore Cusco, we had already been with Isaias for several, several weeks, and he already knew what we'd like to do, and. He knew that we loved simple homemade food. We had this delicious caldo blanco. It's like the white broth. Um, and it's, it's like a broth with vegetables and chunks of meat. Oh my gosh, it was one of the best things. We went to a Chinese Peruvian restaurant. There we got guinea pig. And I was the one who ordered it because I, was, I thought, you know what? I'm going to eat a rodent. The texture was much like bacon, very much like bacon, but also it had a little bit of a salami texture under it. Pull it, pull it. What do you think? 
these are really good. It's like <laughs> ribs. What does it taste like? Guinea pig? <laughs> <laughs> So on that very last day, Isaias took us to the last of the Incan ruins that we would see during our time in Peru. And he actually took us around to the back entrance, um, which was nice because we didn't have to enter along with all the tour buses and the tour groups. And um, you know, we had in his same calm way, uh, a more gentle entry into this beautiful area. What up Marco? King? Water. Just water? And oh. <laughs> Looking good, man. Right. And then, like, stab a spider. And then they have a series of seats uh, of all kinds of uh, big size or small size uh, butts. <laughs> <laughs> the rocks at Saxy Woman were colossal and some rocks were twice as tall as me which admittedly isn't saying a whole lot but others were uh, three or four times as, as tall and the the most impressive thing I think about the rocks there were um, they were massive in size but they were cut in such a way that they fit together perfectly and it, it was just, it was amazing to see, even after seeing Machu Picchu, which was spectacular. In one part of the ruin, there was what looked like a rock, there, it looked like it was a temple, and like the top had been chopped off and toppled, and we could kind of go under it. There, was, there were steps that were like upside down going up, but all in rock. And it was still there. Kind of toppled, but still there, and it was or the whole rock just flipped over. Probably. Maybe. But if the rock, the big, this huge rock, flipped over, what was the force that caused it? A, a huge earthquake <laughs> and uh, rock slide. Uh, this is how like it works. Yeah. You know, from the bottom all the way to the top, and then make a right or make a left. <laughs> yeah. This Don't try this, Michael, please. Just one bit. This is super interesting. There were naturally formed slides out of rock. Um, the rock was so smooth that you could slide down. It was pretty dangerous anyway. I mean, it wasn't the safest thing to do. But it was still extremely fun. <laughs> so, Sexy Waiman was actually one of my favorite ruins, not only because I am a huge fan of super slides, but also because it was the ruins to me that I think seemed most accessible by locals and by people. <laughs> the little one's great. Alrighty. How do you feel? <laughs> Tingly. It was really weird, like we were time traveling back to a time hundreds of years ago, but also kind of traveling back to childhood and just playing in these ruins that were hundreds of years old. So that was pretty, it, it was pretty impressive and it was kind of a more intimate connection than just walking through these ruins. Has their own Christ, um, Cristo Blanco. The statue of the Christ in uh, Cusco felt strangely detached from the rest of the landscape. It almost felt like it was isolated there. And Isaiah told us that this Christ had been a gift from the Palestinian Christians who had been relocated to Cusco. We went to the super cute little planetarium in Cusco. So today I'm going to be your guide 
Um, my name is Jose, and also my uncle. It was very uh, small, Salazar, and it was obviously Salazar. somebody's I'm hobby gonna, that they had so just you, taken to the next you, level. They understand. really wanted to share with us the story of the astronomy and the Incan perspective on the night sky. The Incas were actually the only ancient civilization that we know of that had both light and dark constellations. Now that means that they not only would create shapes and patterns looking at the stars, but also at the dark parts of the sky. So um, their relationship with the stars, like the stars would foretell their harvests and the water situation, like would there be a drought, would there be a flood, um, it would foretell just all these different things and their entire culture revolved around the sky, really. Leaving Peru was, was, was hard. I uh, actually really loved it. I felt like it was a humbling experience. I was sad when we left because I really loved Peru. I think that my favorite part was going to Machu Picchu and just spending time there and looking at the ruins. Um, I also love the food. Um, there's a, a, a very natural sense of pride in their culture and their heritage. Um, and it's not pretentious and it's not flashy. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful culture and a beautiful, beautiful country. I feel like we, we had um, a phenomenal experience that we're never going to forget, essentially. The people there were very welcoming, the people that we met. Um, and it was, it was a beautiful, beautiful country and I was so happy to get to visit it, but I, as we were leaving, I was also excited to continue on with this journey, I guess, and go to Chile, which um, was also 